Welcome, everybody, to Pitch Track Chronicles Podcast, your best source for the most entertaining takes on the Yankees. I am Tats. I am here with Rob and Donald. And to start off the weekend, yes, well, not the weekend, but yesterday, we had a good start to uh, the series against the Rays going into the weekend. Um, in a lineup that looked like, all right, this isn't what we signed up for. But yet again, the players came up to play. Nesta was just nasty as always. Uh, you're able to take the first game against the Rays. A lot of roster moves, guys on the IL, on the IL, you guys, you know, were reinstated from the IL signings. It, it was just a really, really busy couple of days for the Yankees. And I actually think it was, it may not have been the, you know, the, the sexiest of, of moves that were made, but we saw the impact right away. You know, Matt Carpenter was one that was, that was signed to a major league contract yesterday, put in the lineup. And had a, you know, got on base, two runs scored, you know, trying to um, match up with the, with Nestor, with the stash. Which Mario. Is, uh, Mario. So we got Mario and Luigi on the team. So they, Mario and okay, Luigi. Is, I saw that meme. I was like, that is perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, he looks like, well, it looks like more like the WB Mason guy, but hey. <laughs> it uh, also looks like <laughs> so, but um, as predicted, it, it also kind of looks like the guy from Dallas Buyers Club. But maybe, maybe we'll just stick with the <laughs> 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 father of the uh, the Wild Thornberries. I saw that one. But uh, yeah, it, 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 everybody was having a lot of fun with it. And hey, if he's going to contribute to the wins, let, let, let's have fun with it. But, it also uh, looks like Doc Holiday. Have you guys seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah, that's another good one. Doug Holiday. But enough about the stash. Let's just talk I'll about be your Huckleberry. Um, man, Nesta. There's really no. There's nothing you can say. He's the best pitcher in the game right now. He's got the lowest ERA. His ERA is a 1.70 uh, after yesterday's performance. So he's just he's just handling his business, yeah. and it's it's a it's a beautiful thing because it gives. He, he's what you expect from Cole every game. You know, where it's just, you're just going to shut down the lineup. You might have a base runner here or there, but you're going to get out of it. You're going to, you know, that's what an ace does. What was, everything was working. Everything. So over the last couple of days, what was your biggest takeaway from everything that the Yankees had to do going into the series? I mean, they had to basically reconstruct, like, good 10% of the roster just for one series uh, carpenter signing, which I'm fine with because a guy, well, Aaron Hicks is hurt um, again. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, he's, he says he's going to be in the lineup today. I don't think he should play even if he's healthy, but um, carpenter is a guy that gives you another third baseman. Uh, he's a former all-star. So, I mean, if he can produce at any level, you know, if he can hit 210, he's giving you more than Aaron Hicks has. So, um, it's not bad for another infielder and a DH and a lefty bat as well. Also can take some at-bats away from Marvin Gonzalez, who up until yesterday wasn't really doing much. So it was nice to see him finally get on base again, get a hit, uh, break up the no-hitter. Um, Banuelos making the roster, that's pretty cool because there was a time where he was a top prospect. I know he's a taxi squad guy, so once, you know, this is what they're going to do. They're going to keep moving guys left and right, um, but I'm happy for him. And it's just, you know, showing the depth that we hope that we have. If these guys can produce at any level, if Ben Willis comes in and gives us good innings, we saw J.P. Sears have a magnificent start the other night, his first major league start. Um, and then you go back to the guy who's been doing it all season, Nestor, and it, it's – it's there's no more words for it, really. It's just you come to expect it now. You know, he's – we talk about the arm angles all the time and uh, changing deliveries and deception and all that, but he's – dialing it up to 93 94 when he needs to but then he's still touching you know 88 with movement and you still can't hit it so it's like he just throws what he wants when he wants and it's fun to watch because he's shutting down some really good teams now this year and it's almost like when is it gonna end because he's gonna have like one bad start. He ha almost has to, right? Because at some point someone's gonna hit him hard, but they haven't done it yet. And you just 
you sit back and enjoy it. And took the bats a while to get going last night. Um, but and when they got going, they got going. They got a little help from the defense, and then they started going and put the game away. So that was nice to see. Keep the momentum going. We're on a little streak again. All I want is them to just keep winning games, however you do it, grind it out. Because when you have this many injuries, you still don't know what's happening with DJ. Grind out wins any way you can get them. Yeah, and it was another game. Like I was thought, like I said in the, in the beginning, you're looking at the lineup and you're going, look, you know, the, you can't even really criticize the lineups anymore because they're stepping up. You know, they had that little hiccup last week. Now, now it seems like they're getting back on track. You know, we saw hit and runs, and, you know, trying to, you know, steal bases. You know, we're seeing everything that they were doing when they were what? You froze for like a good four seconds. Uh, <laughs> and then you just came back and you were on fast forward. So <laughs> it was just, it was just um, your big baldy head again, just just in, in suspension of motion. <laughs> Uh, technology and bad weather just suck. Just again, it's raining in New York. Um, it's it, we're saw, we're seeing a lot of the little things that they were doing early in the season that were helping them all click, you know, and you know, filling the roles that they were brought on for. You know, even one of the pregame interviews with Kevin Cash. You know, he was joking. You know, we made the joke with uh, Susan Waldman going, "Yeah, when did you guys start running?" You know, and you know, so even, you know, some of the better managers in the league are noticing a, a change in the way that the Yankees are going to play their game. And now they have to readjust because they got so used to the Yankees. Just don't let them hit it out of the park. Well, now you just have to hope, you know, now you got to try to prevent them from hitting it out of the park because you still have, you know, judge in the power spot. You, you know, the, the hit and runs, stolen bases. You know, there, there's too much for the pitcher to worry about. And that's why the Yankees are able to get these advantages and these wins. Um, the one guy that we did see that w- was not a big contributor so far this year is Donald's best friend, Hicks, uh, ended up on the IL. And that really was not a surprise. Um, Donald, how was the uh, celebration at the house uh, when Hicks was scratched from the lineup? Oh, well, it was expected. I mean, it was going <laughs> to happen. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, listen. Though I was really happy. It was really good to, really good to see. I hope he doesn't come back. Um, yeah. So definitely, all is right with the world. <laughs> no, he's, he's on honestly. IL. Yeah, he's on the IL though. Is he not he on just, the IL? He's not on the oh, IL. Just scratched him. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully he goes on the IL really soon. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then you know, just you know, it hurts his asshole getting out of bed and then he has to play golf for, for the rest of his uh, contract. Hopefully we pay him off at some point. No, I mean, honestly, I, I hate to be like that, but he is that much of a non-factor. Like, he can't play defense. He can't hit. Uh, so what are we really paying him for? Like, you could just... We just got, we got more production from Carpenter <laughs> for one day than we have from Aaron Hicks all year. The last month, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, no, I, listen, uh, don't want to waste time talking about uh, Aaron Hicks, but it, um, it certainly did not hurt us not having him on the uh, on the on the field yesterday because, you know, we were we we're going up against uh, a good pitcher in Yarborough. And could you imagine what Yarborough would have done to Aaron Hicks over the over the course of the first five, six innings? So it was probably just as well that he wasn't. Actually, the, they were going to lead him off. Oh my God! So I mean, you were talking about the way that the Yankees um, moving off from Aaron Hicks, like how, how the Yankees have had to readjust. They've had to readjust for a reason, but I mean, obviously, you're not going to get any power from IKF and the Trevino and the Carpenter and Gonzalez um, six through nine, you know, and you know Gallo's not hitting, so you, you know that's that's him out of the the question as well. And Duhar is not really a home run hitter; he's more of a a line drive hitter. And same with Torres. So, I mean, certainly five out of the nine guys you know are not going to hit anything. <laughs> Once again, after after uh, and Duhar in the lineup yesterday, Judge Rizzo, Torres, and Duhar, you just know Gallo straight through to Gonzalez aren't going to give you any power. So the um, the Yankees need to um, find ways to create runs. And Guy KF got on base. Trevino 
once again, just doing his thing, getting on base. Carpenter got on base. Gonzalez was useful, and he got on base. So that was important. That's what we need. Five through nine. Just guys, get dude, just know your roles. That's what we're going to need until Stanton's healthy. Um, we need guys to just know their roles. And and I, I think that we're going to be fine with Andujar playing left field. He, he's, he played a nice left field um, over the last couple of days. He looks more comfortable out there than Aaron Hicks has actually looked in left field this year. Um, so that's a good sign. And he's, and he's putting together some quality at bats here and there. So that's a good, uh, that's good as well. So we've actually needed him. I'm glad we didn't trade him because we were talking about, you know, maybe we should just need to trade him. You know, that depth is helpful because uh, we're up against it with, with Stanton being hurt and we don't know what's going on with Le- LeMay here. I'm, I'm very concerned about these injuries. I mean, we're only, you know, we're only two months into the season and, and suddenly it's the, the, the bullpen is now kind of a mix and match situation. And, uh, and, and Stanton, hopefully it's only the 10 days. Um, I believe it's only calf inflammation. I don't believe it was a strained calf. Uh, that's the latest update because at first I thought it was a strained calf. And if it was a strained calf, that might be a long, lot longer. If it's just a little bit of inflammation, Hopefully by the end of the 10 days, Stanton will be ready to rock and roll again. But um, that probably means that when Stanton comes back, you're going to be needing him to DH a lot more because uh, he's probably been on the field more than the Yankees are comfortable with. So um, you're probably going to be looking at him being a, mostly an everyday DH, probably just to keep him on the field rather than on the uh, IL. And that means that um, the Yankees are going to need another outfielder. Unless uh, Duhar steps up. Uh, I think like, Duhar has been holding up, like you said, he's been playing really well. And this time around, you know, we saw him in left field a little bit last season. This time around, you see his body language. He's more comfortable. He does, yeah, he looks he's got, more, he's got more He's been killing it in AAA as well. He's also yeah. been killing it in AAA. And uh, he also can handle major league pitching. It looks like, I hate to say, but it looks like Florio isn't quite ready to face major league yeah. pitching right um, he looked a, he looked a little bit off off what it takes right now to catch up with major league fastballs. Um, it may not take long for him to get get up to that level, but maybe he does need a little bit more seasoning in AAA. And Duhar is major league ready though; he's got a major league ready bat. Um, so uh, I'm really glad we still got him. But I'm also talking about like obviously we know that we're getting nothing from Andujar, and we know that Gallo is not a fit in New York. That's just a given now. Uh, so we will need another bat. I think I think it's pretty much set in stone. Like we pretty much have to get a bat by the summer, um, and probably another bullpen arm if we want to make a run of the World Series. Which I still think this is a World Series caliber club. Um, uh, it's just uh, we we'll probably need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more protection for Judge. But uh, that moves us on Aaron Judge. Yep. Uh, Rob, uh, do you think that? Uh... What's been your take with the uh, fact that uh, Florial has not been able to get the major league, you know, can't hit major league pitching. His defense is not the issue. And you have Andujar, who is brought up as a third baseman and is now playing a very serviceable left field with confidence and able to hit the ball. Do you think that Andujar is increasing his value? He's always had value. It's just that he got hurt. Had he never gotten hurt, we never have to worry about him leaving the lineup and who knows what his numbers look like. You know, his issue was that he couldn't play a good third base. It was never an issue about the bat. Um, and there was at, and once Gio took the job, there's really no spot for him because they tried him and left and he struggled. So it's like we can't really put him out there. It's defensive liability. So you're trying to find places for him when he was healthy, but then he kept getting hurt. So with, with Andujar, it's just nice to see him healthy and playing better in left field considering how bad he looked when they first tried him out there. But that's why it, it helped that they kept – when they sent him down, they didn't try him anywhere else. They didn't say, okay, we're going to put you at first. No, we're going to put you back to third. They stuck him back out there in left field, and they kept him out there, knowing that his bat was going to produce and that eventually he'll learn left field. Um, and here come the, uh, the landscapers. But – um no, but Florial, I'm not worried about him because he only played, what, two games, three games this year. I mean, this is what happens when you keep sending a guy up and down. You're not going to get consistency. 
you know, they haven't really given him a shot, even since last year. When he deserved to stay on the team, they didn't let him stay on the team. And, yeah, I mean, the fact that he's not hitting major league pitching in a few games, we haven't gotten much from our center fielders yet this year anyway. So, I mean, I'm not worried about Floreal. I think at this point, if he just stays in the minors and he continues to hit, some team's going to take a shot if they want to offer something for him. And at this point, you probably move him if they don't want to use him. Um, I'll say this about Aaron Hicks. If they do have to put him on the IL, then Chris has suggested from the other day of bringing up NCR Tay would make a lot of sense because he's another lefty bat with a really good glove. And again, you're not going to ask, you're not, you don't need much to get the same production that you were getting from Aaron Hicks. So anybody you call up can do what Aaron Hicks was giving you. So you're not losing much if you send, if you put him on the IL. But I could have better production at, at the plate than Hicks. You could put a duck out there and you'll probably get the same production. It's just, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, true. it's yeah. been that bad. How but would not, you guys, uh, how would you, how would you assess the Carpenter pickup? Like, how did you feel when we when you checked Twitter and found out that we just signed Carpenter? Weird, right? Because like, exactly, yeah, exactly. Weird. The last name I'd expect because I thought they would just call up Dietrich. The guy's been killing it in the minors so far in Double A and now Triple A. He's been killing it, and he's probably better than Marvin Gonzalez at this point. He plays all the positions: lefty bat, power. But maybe there's still a spot for him at some point. But I was a little surprised because Carpenter sucked last year with like 130 games for St. Louis. So. I mean, I'm not surprised, though, because when you're trying to just find players to fill up injuries, you kind of go uh, bargain bin shopping. But, hey, he said himself, if they want me to pack the bags on the plane, I'll do it. So he's ready to play whatever role. No, we've he, already oh. got one. We've already got a person for that. That's Aaron Hicks. He actually, even. Actually, actually, somebody, somebody that wanted to get off the Hicks topic, you keep bringing his name up. <laughs> <laughs> he would mess that up. He would put the wrong bags on the wrong plane. He'd send the bags to, like, Boston while the team was going to St. Louis. It would yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Aaron Hicks would mess that up. But no, nah, I mean it was a little weird to see Carpenter, but if he performs in the few games he has to play until we're healthy, then fine. Yeah. I mean yeah, I mean multiple all star. Three time all star, right? Um it, it, up to 2015, he was one of the best infielders in the National League. Um it's just had a spectacular drop off. Since then, um, but Cashman loves these type of guys, guys that were like, <laughs> like all stars back in 2015 is his favorite. Um, but uh, listen, if he can turn back the clock and just give us a little bit of something, but would you guys worry? Does this mean that DJ LeMay is more hurt than the Yankees are letting on? Or do you think this is just uh, an opportunity to bring in a, a quality infielder just to add options? Because uh, from if we're going by what Boone has said, and he's been you know very good with the uh, the interviews this year and being honest and not trying to come up with all these little sayings to distract us, mm-hmm. uh, he had said that they were he was a player that they've been looking at, um, and it was pretty much as soon as he asked for a release uh, from his minor league contract, then the Yankees jumped right on it. So right. this is this has been kind of in the works for for a couple of weeks, uh, and I have no reason to say that Boone is BSing us this time around. You know, okay. uh, so I think that it, this was somebody that they were looking to add with depth. He was doing very well in the minor leagues, and he said he goes a couple of years ago. He goes, I he go, I didn't think I was ever going to play again. I completely, it was, I felt like I forgot how to hit. And he, still, he he went into the minor league systems and did workouts and trying new you know trying to to reinvent his swing. He goes and it, something just clicked, and I'm like, okay, there it is. And that's when he started to rebuild himself. So we might be catching lightning in a bottle that's going to be a significant piece to plug into to uh, you know positions to contribute to the team. So we're not relying so much on Marvin Gonzalez. Not that he's been a disaster, but Marvin Gonzalez, you know. When you see in the more he's playing, you're seeing kind of some of the weaknesses. Um, his better at bats are, which is a good, this is going to be a plus for him. His better at bats are when runners are on. You know, if he's leading off an inning, he's not productive. And so, you know, Marwin, I think, you know, he, he was brought in to be a plugging guy uh, here and there. With the injuries, he's playing more often. 
and we're starting to see some of the, you know, the decline in his play. So I think if you're able to grab, you know, grab somebody that in Carpenter that's really finding himself and riding, you know, his confidence is peaked, that's only a plus for a club. I think with LeMayhew, um, he said he would, he thought he'd be available to pinch hit, but apparently he hasn't gotten any better, even with the cortisone shot. It, no, the feeling is still the same. So I'm a little worried that they might have to IL him just to be safe because he hasn't played in, like, what, three, four games. So, I mean, if you have to put him on the 10-day, it's only retroactive. He'd only be gone for, like, another week. So yeah. you might as well just do it if you're yeah. not going to use him. Um, we still don't know when we're getting Donaldson back because he's still got symptoms, but we don't know if that's COVID or if it's just the flu. So we don't then know when the, we're getting Then there's the suspension he's got to Right, and then there's the suspension. Yeah. So, you know, we don't know when we're getting him back. So I, it would make sense just to IL LeMayhew just to be safe again because you're carrying basically a one-man bench. If you have Hicks who's hurt but not IL – eligible or he's not going to put him on the IL. He's not hurt enough. And then you have LeMay, who's the same thing. You're, you're going into a game with a one-man bench, and that's the backup catcher. Dangerous. So, you, you, yeah, you can't do that. So you kind of have to IL somebody just to get an extra bat up. And Carpenter can play third. I'm, I'm sure he, he'll be fine out there again. And if you have to call up NCRT and stick him in the outfield. But right now, you can kind of roll with Judge in center field for the next few days, although I wouldn't want him playing center on that ugly ass turf and trop tropicana field for three more games so i think they might have to make a move just for the rest of this series and if lemayhew has to miss another week then so be it but it's better to have him healthy the rest of the way than you know he might have to miss another week in the end of may early june so they'll have to do something someone's gonna have to go on the il there's no chance they carry a one-man bench it's definitely telling that we signed carpenter to a major league contract so they're they're going to be expecting him to to be uh, in the big league club as long as he's productive from here on out. Other than that, we'll just DFA him, I suppose. But uh, it looks like he's going to be here for for the foreseeable because he wasn't because he, he wasn't signed to a minor league deal. It was a major league deal, so I think there's probably a reason for that. Um, I am concerned about Lemayhew. Good point about Donaldson. So. Yeah, I mean, listen, we were we were carrying Brantley, um, and there are our other main catchers all in the same bench. So like, it made no sense. We needed a, some more versatility. So now that uh, we've acquired that, it makes sense. Um, it's not ideal that in in a series which could be a division, it could be between us and Tampa for the division. It's not ideal that we're in this scenario where we're having to mix and match, uh, but. Listen, we took game one. That is so big. Big, big, big. That just kind of just takes a little bit of the pressure off. That's a big win uh, in a division against possibly your main rival. And uh, you did it on the back of your ace. He is now officially our ace. There's not even a question about it now. Nestor Cortez is our ace. He's probably the best pitcher in the American League right now. Um, and uh, we're lucky to have him. We gave you, we gave you almost pitched a, a complete game. So he gave you eight innings. Um, uh, um, amazing job from uh, from Nasty Nestor. But yeah, it looks like we're going to be having to mix and match a little bit till hopefully we get some health back. But listen, if you're going to get some guys injured, you're better having them injured in May rather than uh, rather than down the stretch in the dog days. Uh, so uh, you know, you, you can still you can still make do at this point. We've done it before. We've been in this scenario before. The Savages season uh, even last year there was a long period and we went on a big winning streak with a bunch of uh, guys that you would never have expected like Allen and uh, et cetera, et cetera. You just kind of came in and knew the rules and did their job. So that's what we're going to be expecting for the next little while. It's not going to be uh, a team that you expect, but you know, Aaron Boone has actually shown an ability to adjust. And this is a credit to him adjust to the, the teams that he's sending out. If there's people that are injured, they kind of just know the roles and they do their jobs. And uh, and we've managed to claw together victories when our backs are against the wall. And that was another evidence of that yesterday. So, uh, you know, credit to Aaron Boone as well, man. I think, uh, I think he did a good job yesterday. 
Um, they all just stepped up. Oh, I, 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 yesterday's win was such a, I think it was a gut punch to Tampa also. Um, you know, their defense, I haven't, did wasn't their best yesterday. And we're not used to seeing that from Tampa. Tampa is very good with run prevention. Mm-hmm. You know, to put the, you know, to put that offense against, against that defense, but to put up the runs that we did, you know, you got to carry that into today. You know, you, you have to take the first two. If any, if anything, obviously we all want the sweep, <clears throat> but you know, now you have a kind of, you found a little bit of a weakness. Now you have to exploit it. Um, and keep it, you know, right now the Yankees have a, a five and a half game lead in the division, you know, make it six. You know, make it seven. Win three out of four. You know, <laughs> but because you also you don't know when is Lemayhu going to you know and Hicks, or is it just going to be a couple of games and they're going to be feeling okay, or is one or both of them going to end up on the IL? You know that that's a gut punch to the lineup. Not having Lemayhu, I'm not going to say Hicks is a gut punch to the lineup. Um, so if you're able to get as much distance as you can now because we're going to have a lot of games against Tampa in the next month. You know, you, you need to create that distance as often as you can, as fast as you can, because there's going to be a game where the lineup doesn't click. We saw that, you know, we, we've already, we already went through that once. It's going to happen again. We, you know, so with these new additions, you know, with the way Andrew has been playing, I mean, that dive in the first inning in left field, Last year, I don't think he catches that. You know, his, his confidence in his in his playing that position is increasing game by game. You know, um, like Rob said, you know, the offense is not the issue. It's can he can he maintain being a defensive a plus in defense? And uh, Carpenter can can move around the infield between first and uh, first and third. You know, so that can, and that's a lefty bat, and we all know we at first base we prefer lefties. Um, so that's a plus. So the Yankees can weather the storm if they if they keep playing like they did yesterday. Rob, no, I'm Rob. just nodding my head in agreement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you want me? Sorry, what about Aaron the Judge? <laughs> what about uh, Aaron Judge, man? I mean, he continues to solidify his. Uh, his serious MVP candidacy uh, at the moment doesn't even look like there's any compar- uh, comparison. I think he is the MVP of the league right now. I don't think it's that close right now. I mean, yeah, right now nobody's on his level. We, we stuck him at the leadoff spot yesterday. And uh, although he didn't jack anything out of the yard, he was so vital to that win. Stole a base, got the RBI single to put us on the board. Give us the go ahead run right there. Um, after being no hit for a long time, he comes up, bang, RBI, and then then got the deep sack fly, and stole bases as well. He just did everything you could possibly ask for, um, and that's what that's what I needed to see. Like this year, he is putting his this team on his back. Um, he showed he showed signs of that last year. Got a lot of help from Stanton as well. This year, I would say he's been taking it to another level entirely. He's literally put this team on his back, and he showed that yesterday and, and for much of this year, too. Um, um, captain or sign the man, ASAP, whatever it takes. Uh, no, listen, any qualms that I had about Aaron Judge's value uh, in relation to years and money and things like that, which were legit questions maybe earlier in the off season, he's answered them and answered them with fire. Like he has been incredible, incredible. Like it's very hard, especially in the modern era. It's very hard for guys to literally carry teams. You're seeing signs of that from Otani last year, but again, they didn't still didn't make the playoffs. Aaron Judge is literally carrying this team with Stanton out, with half the order not hitting into a, at all, and he's still he's still doing it. Um, I, I can't say enough about what Aaron Judge is doing. No, and the 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 awesomeness of Judge 
is like we what we saw yesterday. He was pretty much doing it all. He was, you know, hard contact, getting on base, you know, being aware, you know, you know, stealing that base was was and you know turned out to pay dividends. You know, it was a big stolen base. You know, his defense never never an issue with the defense. An issue. You know, um, but what you saw at the plate was Lemayhew's out of the lineup. You know, Hicks was pulled out of the lineup. Donaldson's out. Stanton's out. He's staying true to what he's been doing. He didn't try to readjust to make up for the four guys that are not in the lineup anymore. He did, you know, he's staying, he's staying on the plan that he has. You know, level swings. You know, the ball, he's got enough power. The ball's going to go if it's going to go. So, tremendous, tremendous game yesterday from, from Judge not to try to over overextend his abilities and just do what he's been doing. And a he also lot didn't change shows, his approach. That shows leadership. He also didn't change his approach as a leadoff hitter. Normally you have guys that maybe struggle to adjust yeah. to being a middle of the order bat or even a number two bat to being a number one leadoff guy. It didn't throw him off at all. He was still, still exactly the same Aaron judge. And uh, normally I'd freak out about having a guy of his caliber who should be two or three in the order batting lead off. But I, I actually think that was pretty smart. Yeah. The reason why is because the leadoff hitter is going to get more at bats. Technically they they will get the most at bats. And who do you want having the most at bats in your lineup, especially one that's as broken as this current lineup is right now with all the injuries, you want Aaron judge to get come up as much as possible. And so that's why it kind of made sense to have a leadoff. Or you could maybe next time you can switch it around, maybe have Rizzo leading off and judge number two. Doesn't matter. Still, Aaron Judge's approach was really good yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think that uh, I can't say enough, man. He carried this team again, along with Cortez, of course. Yeah, I mean, and they should be able to duplicate. Um, actually, Rob, do you want to say something on Judge real quick? Nope. He's a good player on our team, and he has been since we called him up. So, I mean, it, there's no question anymore. And uh, he keeps proving me right. He keeps proving a lot of other people right, and he keeps proving a lot of people wrong. So, keeping keep, keep it up because uh, that's that's my captain. That's the best player on our team, and that's a top five player in baseball. And we have him, and we need to have him for the rest of his career. So, I'll leave it at that. I mean, to this point in the season, last year, the guys would say, you know, there, there were fans that wanted to trade him. You know, saying he's going to break down. And, you know, think of where we would be at this point with these guys, with the guys that are down. Obviously, it's a parallel universe because you don't know what's going to happen year to year. But if we did not have Judge in the lineup at this point, this team would just, we, Baltimore would have a better record than us. <clears throat> so we'll just, you know, we'll leave it at that. The judge has to stay long term. <clears throat> but the the pitcher for for Tampa tonight, because at first when I pulled up the the pitching matchup with Tyone and Springs, you know Springs two and one with a one point three five ERA. I'm like, all right, how many? You know, but that's also uh, in twelve games, so he hasn't been completely efficient. You know, I think it's just a matter of you may, you're not going to get a lot of runs against him, but he's not getting run support. So he's kind of like their version of uh, Montgomery. Because <laughs> Monty's still waiting for runs to score. <laughs> but, that poor guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought a runs, you know, a GoFundMe with runs for, for uh, <laughs> Montgomery. <laughs> Take one run off of every game and just put it away until Montgomery starts. And that's what we start with. <laughs> That's a good idea, man. <laughs> That's a great idea. Let's do that. Really good idea. I'm gonna get Boone on the phone in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this really this should be this should be a game that we're able to take uh, back to back on them and really put the pressure on them because Tampa don't play well with the pressure. Um, you know, not this year. You know, their defense has been really shaky. So you got to exploit that while you can, like we said. And that, that's just how the Yankees got to get through the series. Put more pressure on them. Widen that gap. Widen the lead in the division while you can. 
And all right, I just want to. I think you need to adjust your expectations. I mean, this team is still it's a patchwork offense right now. So the fact that we took game one is, is a really good step. But we just take it a game at a time. Uh, I think we need to ensure that we don't just <laughs> just start making sweeping generalizations that. Tampa can't handle the pressure because Tampa are right there, man. I mean, the fact that the Yankees have the best record in baseball, uh, they only reached double digit losses a couple of days ago, yet Tampa are only five games out, says enough about Tampa that they're going to be there, thereabouts as well, man. I mean, I couldn't really name you a lot of the Tampa players because it seems to change on a, on a monthly basis, but they're always around. They are always around. So they're well managed. Uh, and so the fact that they're only five and a bit games out is enough of evidence that Tampa are going to be around. So let's not just make generalities. General, oh, let's make it three out of four. I mean, listen, we're, we're putting in guys that we never expected to be Yankees as of yesterday <laughs> and in their key role. So um, no one expected Carpenter to be starting. We only just signed him a couple hours ago, it felt like, and suddenly he was starting. So Let's just adjust our expectations. We take it a game at a time. If we take three out of four, then then that is actually a testament to Aaron Boone and this and the and the way this Yankee team just keeps on rolling. But we'll deal with it when we get there. Um, but if we even if we share the series, then I feel that as a W in my in my in my uh, estimations with all these changes that are kind of going on at the moment. We're having a mix and match, so uh, I do favor our rotation. Uh, our rotation is giving us a chance in every single day, which is fantastic. Um, we've got Holmes, who's, you know, best reliever in baseball right now. Um, and we've got Aaron Judge, who's the best player in baseball right now. And that should be enough. But, you know, we, we can't just, uh, if we, even if we lose three out of four, I'm not going to say it's the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, uh, because once this team is whole, then uh, we'll be back regardless. But the fact we took game one is great, really good. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm still riding the high of, you know, being, you know, having to see the way the season's gone so far. You know, it's almost like you feel invincible. You know, I'm a little overhyped. You know, I'll admit that. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, very. Because yeah. you're, you're like discounting Springs because he's been really good. But the thing is, much like most Tampa starters outside of maybe Kluber and when they get Glasnow back, they don't throw innings. So it's, they're going to bullpen their way. So right. you can get to him early. Don't let him give you those three, four shutdown innings because I'm looking at his numbers right now, and he has only gone into the fifth or well, his last three starts. He's given them four or more innings. So lately they've been stretching his arm out, but he's also been really good this year. So Yeah, because the, the one thing that, that I, I, I didn't mention that I, I saw, I closed the screen out, but I think it's, he's got – he started – he's been in 12 games, but he's only pitched 27.1 innings, some, somewhere around there. So – yeah, maybe maybe his numbers are are uh, construed and uh, not completely uh, reliable to lean on. So it could be, you know, who knows? We'll see. I'm just saying he's been pitching good, and our offense has been kind of bad lately. So let's just yeah. not. I don't want to say we're gonna win this one because we scraped some runs together late yesterday. We we were getting no hit for the first you know five innings until Marvin Gonzalez singled. So. I'm just want to temper the expectations, keep the good vibes going. If we start getting ahead of ourselves, I'm like, we're going to win the whole thing. Let's take it easy because this is still a very Swiss cheese offense that we have right now. There's a lot of holes. Very true. Very true. Not right. Rob, what did you think about the, the fact that Tampa and the Yankees came together yesterday with their, you know, with their, their, their stance to try and help? Oh, social media? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm disgusted that people are pissed off about it. It's disgusting that this is the world we live in where this is why everyone gets um, when you ask celebrities and sports figures and other people to use their voice and they do. Remember when LeBron James got told to shut up and dribble? This is basically the same thing. People are saying shut up and talk about baseball because the team is trying to raise awareness for a really serious freaking issue right now. Kids were just killed. A couple of days ago, and not too long before that, we just got people that were just shopping for groceries. The same thing happened to them in a grocery store. So what is safe anymore? And now we're trying to have teams that are using their platforms just to raise awareness and give you simple facts. They're not stating opinions. They're not yep. telling you 
vote blue, vote red. No, they're not telling you to pick a side of a corrupt government. No, they're just giving you straight facts and people are trying to shut that down and they're getting angry telling you stick to baseball. No, 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 no. Don't stick to baseball. Keep raising awareness. And let's force our corrupt ass leaders to do something about it because it's sick and it's sickening that kids have to die before something gets done. And I'll leave it at that. Cause I was really mad when people were getting were responding the way they were to that. Like, why is that a bad thing that they're trying to raise awareness? Oh, it's not. And I'm one of those. I like to keep politics out of sports. I like sports to be my distraction from, you know, the stress at work, the stress in the news, you know, and what goes on in, the, in, in this really messed up world. But I thought that the way that they did it yesterday was the right way to do it. That's what I'll say on it. I thought it was the right way. It wasn't opinions. It was facts. You know, I, you know, I work at night. So I list, you know, I get my games through John and Susan. Sometimes it's not the best way to do it with John, but uh, you know, <laughs> you know, he's my hero. I want to be like him when I grow up. But um, no, You're seriously, already you know, You're already there. There was a moment. There was a moment last night when John's broadcasting, and he kind of went out of character, and he was talking about, you know, him and Susan took a minute to commend the Yankees and the Rays for their efforts through their social media platforms. And you, it almost sounded like he was going to break down and cry talking about the kids. Um, it was, I've never, ever heard John so emotional. Um, that shows you the impact that it's having on all of us. And we need to be more vocal to put the pressure on, you know, both sides of the aisle to finally come up with a solution to this problem. Because this cannot continue. And so you're right, man. That, that, that's the way, the way I view it is that we've gotten to the stage now where we do need to have organizations or people that you're not, not necessarily expecting to, to, to put a little bit of pressure on the government, having to put pressure on the government because, or on either government um, or either elected official. I'm not taking any political sides at all because this is what the problem is. When you look at those, those replies to these tweets, it was people like, oh, this is political. There was nothing political, man. These are literal facts. If you can't handle the facts, and that's on you, I'm afraid. That is not, I mean, we got to the stage where we need our baseball organizations to actually use their platform for good because the previous way wasn't working. We've had, we've had like years and years and years and years of massacres, I'm afraid, because it seems to happen. On a monthly basis, the only and thing it's happened, humans have been consistently good at is destroying. It happened. Yourself. It happened under Trump. It happened under Obama, and it's happening under Biden. There are massacres that are happening, right? And on both sides of the aisle, nothing is happening. Okay, now whichever way you want to blame it, that's on that's on your political opinion. But nothing's changing, right? So probably the Yankees and the Rays probably just went. You know what? If we use our our platform for good then at least people are going to be more aware of what's going on because all we ever get to see is an elected official going prayers to the family and then they squabble in Congress, nothing gets done, and then they move on and a couple of days later they pretend that nothing happened and then, oh, there's another bombing or another another attack or there's another um, assault weapon being used to murder a bunch of kids and then once again, prayers to the family, really, really sorry. A couple of days later, nothing happens, right? So it's now gone to the stage where it's beyond a joke. It's now, it's happening more than I've ever imagined anything could happen. So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't really, because if the Yankees did nothing and they just went and played baseball, I guarantee you there'd be people replying going, why are they even playing baseball? Why are they even sending memes right now when there's there's people yeah. dead, right? But instead the Yankees go and just go, you know what? We're, we're an organization. There's a lot of people that, that we've got. We've got a big platform, the biggest organization in the world. At least raise awareness to it. And then instead, got people going, oh, this is embarrassing. Well, you're the Yankee to talk about baseball. I mean, you can't win. Uh, and that's sad. But I think, I think the most right-minded people would just go, this is good. At least it's out there, right? Uh, and, and if it saves one life, then that's... That's a start. And if it raises awareness, 
and it helps people be aware of what is going on on a daily basis, that is a start. It's only a start. It's not going to secure anything. It's not going to solve anything, but at least it's out there. And at least they try to use their powers for good. And I, I can't see any downside to it. They weren't, they weren't stating which side to vote. I think they were only just stating facts. I, that's a good thing. Yeah. Keep politics out of it, but sometimes you have to bring politics into it. And again, it's been 10 years, not even 10 years. It'll be 10 years this year since Sandy Hook. And it just happened again. And we almost forgot about what happened in Buffalo because what happened in Texas two days ago. And Buffalo just fucking happened. So at what point are we going to do something and stop with this? It's their fault. No, it's their fault. I don't care. Who blame whoever the hell you want to blame because I'm not picking a fucking side in this stupid government crap. I just want them to do something because this is ridiculous. Kids, kids, children, 10-year-old children, barely even start of their lives, are dead now because you assholes don't want to do something because you allow anybody, some sick freaking assholes who clearly have problems, going to get a gun that's used for the military. And you don't see a problem with that. You don't see a problem with that. Like, why does he need an AR-15? He said it on a freaking social media post. He's going to go do it. And he did it, you know, and now kids are dead. And just two weeks ago, people were simply shopping for groceries. They're dead. Ten years ago, Sandy Hook happened. Just four years ago, right down the street from where I was, my high school got shot up. So you don't think that there's a problem in this country? Because why is it not help? It's not help happening anywhere else. And when you ask Ted Cruz about it, he walks away from reporters. So don't tell me that the government's doing what they can. No, they're all corrupt. They don't care. They don't care because they would have done something by now. And they just know the NRA is in their is there in the NRA's pockets. I'm so I'm getting really political now, but you know what? It needs to be said because I'm sick of this shit. It's happening. There's been more shootings than there have been days in the year. More mass shootings than there have been days in the year. Does it happen anywhere else? It doesn't happen anywhere else. No. I'm afraid it doesn't. There's no excuse for it. As I say, what's the worst that can happen? Yankees use their platform, and if it changes one person's opinion. Uh, and makes them more aware of what's going on, then that is a step in the right direction. So say nothing is ever going to be cured, but it has to be a start. Something had to be done. And and I'm glad that, that the Yankees and, and, and the Rays as well, to, the, to their credit, came together and, and did something right. I was really surprised when it happened, um, but I'm, I'm glad it happened. It's As I say, it's a start. It is a start. It's a long road to to get in this fix, but if if it takes one voice that has a big platform to maybe make people aware that this is something that 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 needs to change, then fine. I mean, listen, the Yankees, sorry, the Yankees, baseball and sports lost its privilege to just go and use it as a distraction once everybody once there's more shootings uh, than there are days in the year. Then somehow sports now needs to get involved because that is the one thing that the whole country gets behind either side of the aisle everyone watches sports that's just a fact there's a big thing about uh, it's a big thing about our country we all love sports and if uh i'm sorry they the the uh the ability just to forget and just watch the sport for a couple of hours was lost when people start dying and nothing gets done sorry oh, something man. now needs to be done now the yankees need to intervene just say something just one word out there these are the facts. You interpret as you want to interpret it, but awareness needs to be made for sure. Yeah, and no, this this is the the our opinions right now and our feelings towards this is not a political statement; it's a public service statement. Yeah, you know, and that's what the Yankees and Rays did yesterday. I think every team should have done something. Okay, now I am you know. I don't really, I don't, I don't disclose, you know, any political affiliations because I don't affiliate with any of them. But what I will say is I don't care if you are blue or red, this should be the most bipartisan topic yeah. that this country can face and, and, and handle. This should not be, a, it should not be a question of, well, you know, we want to keep our children safe. That's, that's the priority that these politicians need to have. No, don't be afraid of, of upsetting the guy next to you because you want to avoid, you know, say something, you know, about how you feel. Because once you start hiding your own, your beliefs, nobody will believe you. you know, 
do it, do what's right. Don't, don't do what's easy. Don't do what's favorable. Do what's right. So I'll leave that at that. And also, it's, it is Memorial Day weekend. We want to uh, send our prayers to any family in the military that have had family members give their lives to the freedoms that we have where we can have these discussions. Because without, the, without those veterans that gave their life, um, we wouldn't have the country that we do to be so opinionated and so emotional about things. Um, and there are a lot of places that don't have the freedoms that we do. So, yes. uh, you know, prayers to those veterans and the families of those veterans, uh, the veterans that gave their lives. Um, and we'll end the show on that. Remember, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on sportname.com slash player on Northeast Streaming Sports on Roku, where you pinch out your pride, play hard, and love each other.